Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Brothers channel. And this is my performance review of the Anti-Shark the Game 6.0. So this shoe is going for 110 bucks, which is super freaking cheap. But let me tell you guys, we have full length N2 foam, which they use this foam in Clay Thompson's shoe, which is their signature shoe. It's their biggest lineup, right, for basketball because that's their biggest name. And also look at this carbon fiber and it's nice carbon fiber not like the lebron 20s so i mean just from that carbon fiber and full length and tufo for 110 bucks like the value you'd be like holy crap that's freaking amazing but how does it perform let's find out right now if you guys do want to get it, i'll leave a link in the description box but let's get it start off with the tractiones and the traction is freaking really really good guys but a little inconsistent right especially on dust so uh, right when I got it, you know, uh, it was really good right out the box. I didn't have to break it in or anything. And also on a clean court, it's really good as well. You're going to be stopping pretty much on a dime. It has a really nice, good bite. Also it has a really nice, loud, high-pitched squeak. So how does it perform on dust though? So it is a little inconsistent on dust and also like hard stops, right? So even if I was playing on a pretty clean court, I would slide out just a tiny bit if I was doing a really hard stop. Uh, but it wasn't dangerous or anything. It wasn't terrible. It's just, I noticed a little bit. Uh, and like I said, you know, it was a little inconsistent. Like sometimes I would get a really good stop on a hard, you know, hard stop, but also sometimes it would slide out just a tiny bit, right? But I, I felt it a little bit more on a dusty court, right? Uh, but it wasn't terrible, like I said, and also it was a very easy wipe. Like even if you're playing on a dusty court, you know, uh, it's a pretty easy wipe, so you should be fine. Just be careful on harder stops. And also for durability, it feels like it's gonna be pretty damn good. I mean, the rubber is actually like kind of on the softer side of things, uh, but the grooves are deep. And um, I guess there are a lot of grooves as well, or I guess a lot more surface area. So uh, I feel like the you know, outdoor use should be pretty damn good. So there's a traction there overall, it was good. Uh, moving on to the heel to toe transition, also really, really nice and smooth, right? So here in the heel, as you guys can see, this cage looks kind of crazy, right? Uh, but there's actually nice compression here in the heel and we have this rounded shape. So it feels nice and smooth here in the heel. And the forefoot, we have a nice curved shape and a lot of forefoot flex. Look at that. Very, very nice and flexible. Although we have this carbon fiber and chain plate, which is good for torsional support. So overall heel to toe transition when you're doing heel dominant strides down the court, it feels really smooth and I, I loved how it felt, right? And now moving on to the cushioning setup, which is one of my favorite parts about this shoe. So they just did a really good job in blending everything together in what I want. Of course, cushion is very subjective in what people want. Some people may want uh, responsiveness. Some people may want a court feel or impact protection or bounce or whatever, right? And obviously uh, some things are more important to uh, other people. Uh, but for me, I feel like this is a really good all around cushioning setup and I feel like a, the majority of people will really like it, right? So they're using, like I mentioned before, full length N2 foam, which is the foam that they're using in their uh, Clay Thompson's line. And it looks like Boost, right? It has the pellets, but it's a little bit better than Boost. It's, I would say it's just as soft as Boost, but there's a little bit more bounce, a little bit more rebound back, right? So first of all, step and comfort is really, really good in the shoe. Uh, I don't know what they did with the like strobe board, but it's like a foam strobe board, which I've never seen before, but that feels really nice. The insole also feels really good. So uh, step and comfort is really, really nice. I love it, it's super comfortable. Uh, it gives a nice compression as well, right underneath your foot. Also here in the heel, I, I definitely feel like uh, they did a good job in caging the N2 foam because like I said, N2 foam is super soft, right? Uh, but this cage also isn't like a really stiff plastic or anything. There's a little bit of give to it. So the actual midsole, you can feel a little bit of compression here in the heel as well, which feels great. Core feel is also really good. So here in the forefoot, it feels nice. In the heel, it gets a little bit thicker, uh, but it's not terrible at all. So you still have good core feel. Impact protection also is really good. Uh, you know, even if you're doing hard impacts, heel strikes and stuff like that, your feet are not gonna hurt. So overall, it's really nice. I guess the only thing it kind of doesn't have is like, it's not super bouncy, but there is a little bit of rebound back here in the heel. You know, uh, but if you're comparing it to like the PG6 or like a Zoom Strobel unit, uh, then obviously uh, it's not it's not as bouncy, right? So overall, it does everything pretty damn well, and I really enjoyed the cushioning setup. All right, moving on to the materials. So definitely the materials are in, 
right? Uh, as far as the quality goes, but I like how it feels on foot. So here in the toe box, we have this like screen mesh and then underneath that we have like a mesh material as well. But overall it's super thin, right? It's thin, it conforms to your foot very, very well. It doesn't hurt at all. It, it's not, it doesn't feel cumbersome. It actually breaks in very nicely too. Uh, also here on like, I guess the medial side, we have like a synthetic material, which feels super cheap. And also we have all this fuse, which also feels pretty damn cheap as well, but it adds for support and durability, right? So like I said, it feels great on foot. Here in the midfoot, it stays really, really thin, especially this material right here. But as you guys can see, we have this kind of like inner booty tongue, right? And it's just like mesh material, but there is a little bit of foam backed into it. So it feels nice and plush, you know, like especially here on top of your foot, right? Like throughout the entire length of the tongue right here, right? So I do like how it's kind of like a one booty upper, right? And then here in the ankle area, we have not a nice bit of padding with these Achilles pads. It definitely does improve the comfort here in the back of the heel and does improve lockdowns. So for 110 bucks, I mean, it's not it actually feels really nice on foot, right? But like I said, the quality is pretty bad, um, but you can't really complain because you get full length and do foam and carbon fiber. They had to cut costs somewhere, right? And that's what they did for the materials. All right, moving on to the fit. I went true to size and fits me overall pretty well, but holy crap, guys, it's so damn snug, right? So lengthwise, I was good to go, right? Uh, my toes go pretty much right to the edge of the shoe. So uh, lengthwise, I was good, but Look at how narrow this shoe is. Look at that. And also look at how pointy it is. Like, <laughs> so it was it was very, very narrow and also super freaking snug here in the toe box, which I like to have a really snug fit in my ball shoes. <laughs> you guys already know, uh, but I feel like it's still a little too tight for me, right? So um, like it wasn't terrible. I wasn't getting really bad needles and I could deal with it, uh, but it was kind of like, I definitely did notice it. So of course, if you want a really snug fit, then just go true to size. But if you want more of like a loser fit, maybe go up half a size. Uh, if you have a wide foot or you want a really roomy toe box or roomy fit, then this probably isn't the best option or maybe go up a full size or a full size and a half. Just be careful, it's a really, really snug fit, right? All right, moving on to the support and lockdown. So for lateral containment, I was good to go as well, right? So here in the fourth, we have uh, this cage coming up acting as a sidewall, right? It cages the cushion and also acts as a sidewall. So it's like dual purpose. Also, we have some fuse in the material, right? So the material is super supportive. We have the sidewalls coming up here in the forefoot, here in the midfoot, and also here in the heel. And it feels like there's an internal TPU heel counter. So lateral containment, I was good to go. My foot was not moving out of the footbed at all. And even if you're a bigger dude, you should be fine, right? Uh, I, it's very, very good for lateral containment. Also, lateral stability was really good. Like look at how wide this forefoot base is, right? You have a very sharp outrigger that protrudes out a lot. So lateral stability was very good for me as well. Uh, so yeah, support and lockdown, amazing. I had zero heel slippage and also the fit was amazing. So a lockdown and all that, my foot uh, was just held into the shoe and felt really nice. All right, moving on to the weight of the shoe. It's 12.24 ounces. Let's check the other pair. 12.1 ounces. So it's a little bit lighter than average, which of course is a good thing. And that definitely does surprise me because there's all this plastic, right? As far as like the caging goes as well. So I thought, I, you know, when I saw it, I thought it would be like around 13 something ounces, but it's actually not. So it feels really good and it feels minimal. And also you feel very responsive when you're playing in this shoe, right? Traction overall is good. Cushion is responsive, uh, but also super comfortable. And materials overall are pretty damn minimal on foot as well. So uh, I really enjoyed playing in this shoe. It felt really great. All right, moving on to the ventilation. So it's actually pretty good for ventilation. So here in the toe box, we have some screen mesh. We have a lot of mesh as well, which air goes through very easily. Your foot is going to be pretty cool in the Anti Shock the Game 6.0. As far as the aesthetics go, it looks all right. You know, um, I don't like like this design on the material. Um, I guess like the, the upper doesn't look very good. I do like the design here for like the caging and stuff, uh, but it's not terrible though. So um, I'd just say it's all right in my personal opinion. Tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below. So wrapping things up, yes guys. It's, it's one of the best bang for your buck shoes that you can get right now, right? So for 110 bucks, the value is really, really good. Performance is also really good. It's up there. I wouldn't say it's top, top tier, but it will definitely be in my rotation 
pretty, pretty heavily. You know, I, I actually enjoy playing in this shoe a lot. And I feel like a lot of people will enjoy playing in this shoe as well. Like if you're a guard, but you want a little bit of cushion, you know, and you want it to be very comfortable cushion with good traction, good fit and support, uh, this is an amazing shoe. Also, if you're a bigger dude and you don't mind the low top, but you also, you know, want a lot of support and good cushion, this also is a great option, especially since it is a lighter shoe as well. So anyways, that about concludes my performance review of the Anti-Shock Game 6.0. It's an amazing shoe and I 100% recommend that you guys try it out. Uh, again, if you guys do want to get it, I'll leave a link in the description box, but that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.